Another day gone by and more moves for your Miami Dolphins. Neville Gallimore and Saran Neal added to the mix in the last 24 hours. We are covering all of that here today on this episode of Locked on Dolphins. You are Locked on Dolphins, your daily Miami Dolphins podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Miami. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Dolphins. It is your team every day here on the Locked On Network. I'm your host, Cal Krabs, a lifelong Miami Dolphins fan, host of Locked On Dolphins, co-host of Locked On NFL Scouting. You can find our shows on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Tip of the cap to our everydayers, because it is your team every day. We don't just say it. We live it here on the Locked On Network. Today's episode of Locked On Dolphins is brought to you by Game, Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On. For $20 off your first purchase on last-minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. The Miami Dolphins have continued their recalibration and reformation of their offense uh, with another handful of moves to pair along with what has been a relatively busy, if not heavy-hitting, first couple of days of the league calendar year and the legal tampering period, which of course is now closed because the league calendar year opened yesterday at four o'clock. Uh, the Dolphins formalizing a number of contracts, getting John U. Smith, not just under contract, but, and, and he was of course cut. So he could sign earlier than the start of the league year. He had his introductory press conference yesterday via zoom with the South Florida media and Miami has continued to churn. And I think there's a couple interesting storylines, one for Neville Gallimore and one for Saran Neal from the Buffalo Bills, who has come as a defensive back to Miami and agreed to his contract as well. He visited yesterday and signed on the dotted line. But let's start with Neville Gallimore. Neville Gallimore is a defensive tackle from the University of Oklahoma who played his first four seasons in the NFL with the Dallas Cowboys never really took the leap to be the player that you thought he might be capable of being based off of his college tape at Oklahoma. When he played at Oklahoma, he was a little bit of a misaligned player, played a little out of position, played a lot head up over top of the center in the drop eight defenses of the Big 12. And you knew there was potential for him to be a penetration style player. And in reality, it really hasn't, changed uh, since he's gotten to, to Dallas. He's been a player who last season in the final year of his contract logged a career high in pressures with uh, 12, 13 pressures, uh, but he only played 289 total snaps defensively last season. You go back to the previous season before that in 2022, he played 401 snaps on the defensive line and 402 snaps on defense as a whole in 2021. 164 total snaps, and then in 2020, 419. So there's kind of been these ebbs and flows with usage and utilization for Neville Gallimore. Good athlete, bit undersized for a Dallas has frequently tried to play him, never really made the leap as a pass rusher. And now he comes to Miami as the latest addition to what has been a overhauled depth units you know this this time or, or the start of the 2023 season it was christian wilkins zach sealer raekwon davis deshaun hand and that was it like brandon peely was the next name in line for the dolphins and what they've done since the the end of the season with this schematic change we're expecting isaiah mack davion nixon neville gallimore young guys with body types that might be a fit for certain roles up front they're bringing these guys in. I think the most interesting thing about Neville Gallimore is not necessarily the scheme fit because he he it has been a rotational player. And I think your expectations should be aligned accordingly. I don't think this is a player that's going to come in here and be a bona fide starter for the Dolphins. Aaron Wilson on X or Twitter reported the terms of the deal. Dolphins deal for Neville Gallimore one year. $1.79 million fully guaranteed. So it's a fully guaranteed contract with a $665,000 signing bonus. Here's what catches my eye 
about a $1.79 million fully guaranteed contract, aside of the fact that the dollars are fully guaranteed. This is not an insignificant dollar amount. And I've already posted this on X. So apologies if you, you've been on Twitter. I don't know why I keep pinballing back and forth between X and Twitter. It's Twitter. But I posted this on Twitter with the snippet from the collective bargaining agreement in 2020, which is the most recent NFL collective bargaining agreement, pursuant to compensatory picks. Notwithstanding anything to the contrary in Article 6 or this appendix, unrestricted free agent who signs a one-year NFL player contract that provides a maximum of $1.75 million shall not be a compensatory free agent, a.k.a. they are excluded from the compensatory formula. This is as of 2020, so bear with me. However, the signing club must notify NFL Management Council upon execution of the contract that the player is being designated as an excluded unrestricted free agent. The above stated maximum of $1.75 million shall apply to the 2020 and 2021 league years and thereafter shall increase by $20,000 on a biannual basis. As an example, the maximum during the 2022 and 2023 league years shall be $1.77 million, which would mean biannual basis. It last went up in 2022. You're now in 2024. It goes up another $20,000 which means the minimum threshold for a contract on a one-year deal for an unrestricted free agent who was not cut by an opposing team to be designated as exempt from the compensatory pick formula is a one-year, $1.79 million contract. Clear as day. <laughs> this is the intent and part of the plan of the Dolphins offseason. They are gaming the system. And they gave a fully guaranteed contract for $1.79 million as the Maximum amount that you could give while still designating a player as an exempt free agent. Um, and it's a, a part of Miami's strategy. They're kind of shotgun shelling, getting as many young guys in here. I'm sure that's going to correlate with uh, some kind of investment, a, a meaningful investment, whether it's an early draft selection or it's somebody uh, post June 1st. I'm sure they're not done. I, I'm sure they're not going to look at Isaiah Mack and Davion Nixon and Neville Gallimore alongside Zach Seo and say, hey, we're good to go. But I'll be honest, I like every single one of those options more than Brandon Peely and probably Deshaun Hand to kind of set the, the level of expectation that I have for Neville Gallimore and Davion Nixon and kind of this infusion of young players that Miami is going to try to through competition, breed some depth on the defensive line. The most interesting thing for me, for Neville, is not the player profile. It's the strategy behind the contract that tells you what the Dolphins' intent is right now. And as a reminder, because compensatory picks are they're complicated, we'll do a whole show on it, want to get through this first wave of free agency. The compensatory window runs from now, or yesterday, through the Monday after the NFL draft for players who were expiring contracts and not cut from their previous contract with a new team. So Ron Neal was cut from his previous team, which was the Buffalo Bills. We're going to get into that next here on this episode of Locked on Dolphins. So stick with us. If you love concerts or comedy or theater or sporting events, Game Time is the ticketing app for you because they give you complete peace of mind with your purchase. You could see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect. All in prices that show you your total up front, so there's no surprises when you put those tickets into your cart and go to check out. And you can purchase tickets in just a few clicks from your phone. And it is easy to purchase and have tickets delivered directly to your phone. They are obsessed with finding you ways to save money on your tickets. They have deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It is the place to find last minute seats. And the game time guarantee means you will always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same row and section for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, 
guaranteed. So Saran Neal, uh, the other new Miami Dolphin. And this one, it's a little bit of a story of the player, but it's also a little bit of a, a story with the strategy of the team as well. So let's start with Saran Neal, the player. Saran Neal was drafted in the fifth round by the Buffalo Bills in 2018 out of Jacksonville State. He's going to be 30 years old in August. Your expectations should be aligned accordingly. Uh, this is a player who this past season for Buffalo played 45 snaps on defense. He also played 330-something snaps on special teams. In 2022, just to wind back uh, another year, uh, you had two snaps at free safety. You had four snaps as a wide corner. You had one snap on the line of scrimmage. You had 16 snaps in the box, and you had 45 snaps in the nickel. Um, the vast majority of those snaps came in week five where he played 23 snaps in the nickel and then two additional snaps on defense. No other game the rest of the season he played more than 12 snaps. There were only two that he played double digit snaps defensively. But he played over 320 snaps on special teams. So this is a core special teams type of player in Saran Neal. He's big. He's physical. Uh, he's not the fastest guy, but he is going to make his hay a million percent with covering kicks, on kick coverage, on kick return, on punt coverage, on punt return. When you talk about core, four core special teams players, both kick game and kick coverage, on kickoff and punt. This is an investment in that type of player. And that's where the story lies for me as it pertains to Serrano. Because Miami, the past few seasons, has had depth players get elevated into higher roles within the defense and it has hurt the kick coverage unit. But I think when you reflect on the roster composition that Miami has assembled the last few years, at least it has felt as though their retention of players has been more focused on the offensive and defensive units. And if this is Danny Crossman's uh, Bernie Sanders meme, I'm once again asking. They retained Danny Crossman, and one would presume that Danny Crossman, his argument is once again, my kick cover, my coverage guys or my, my special teams players end up playing too much on offense or defense. And then you have change, and change is where things air and go off the rails. Signing a player like Saran Neal, who's one of the more accomplished special teams players in all of football, uh, as far as the resume that he has created for himself, and the Dolphins' social account has already pumped it up an hour ago, as of me recording this, put out career stats on special teams with the caption, a special teams ace. 12th in the NFL in special teams tackle since 2018. First in the NFL in forced fumbles on special teams since 2018. Miami getting this kind of player, are you going to advocate or are you going to allocate a few more spots on your 53 for designated special teams players? If that's the case, I think there's a couple different position groups across the roster from last year where you may see lower numbers. Quarterback might be one of them. You carry three quarterbacks all season after the progress that was shown. And then with the emergency quarterback rules where you can dress a third quarterback on game day, if he's off the practice squad, that's a whole strategic conversation to be had. Do you carry this many running backs versus adding another tight end? Who's a core special teams player. Saran Neal being added to the defensive backfield. The intent should not be for Saran Neal to ever play snaps on, on, on defense. He should be a special teams player. And if you're going to allocate more of those kinds of players, look, Clayton Fezulin was one of those kinds of players, and I hated the value of the contract. Uh, who was the tight end? Seathan Carter they got from the Bengals was one of those kinds of players, and I hated the contract. So we'll see what the, I don't believe the Saran Neal numbers are in which is a nice segue to what we are continuing to wait on. Uh, we're trying to figure out 
a number of things as it pertains to the um, salary cap and where the Dolphins are at. Um, but Saran Neal, on a one-year contract, we don't know the, the league terms as of the time of this recording, is going to be a fascinating contract to know, okay, you were signed with the intent of being a special teams player. Justin Bethel was kind of that player last year, but lo and behold, Jalen Ramsey gets hurt, and guess who's the dime player and and through week three and four ends up being the nickel player until they flip back because Vic got tired of it. Justin Bethel was your, your dime and then nickel player. So just another example of a primary special teams player getting put into elevated positions on the unit that is not what he's there to do. So how do you alleviate some of that? By investing in a few core special teams type players. And this is presumably a step in that direction. Now, depending on injuries and what else they choose to allocate, they may find Saran Neal in the same spot that these other guys have been in the past few years. And if that's the case, well, then we can be disappointed in special teams all over. I think it's very telling that the intent is a kick coverage player and special teams specialist. And Miami went out and got one. We'll see if that trend continues as well at the expense of some other spots on the 53 when we get into the summer and have a better idea of what that could potentially end up looking like. We are going to talk more about what we're waiting on at this stage of the game on Thursday, March 14th, 2024. Up next here on this episode of Locked on Dolphins, stick with us. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood is the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap in the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good only through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply and now for some legal info. This claim is as of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. The 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. You must keep your Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% match on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available only to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. I am just a boy standing in front of the cap websites asking for them to love me by giving me Toronto Arms that's restructure contract details. <laughs> that is, I must check five times a day. And I know there's a bunch of you who love the Dolphins who quite frankly could not give two hoots about Toronto Armstead's cap situation and his restructured contract. But it is done. They reworked this contract. They adjusted the contract. And yet, all of our cap resources, spot track, over the cap, they all do outstanding work. Uh, you, you, no matter where you look, the Dolphins are listed at about a million dollars in cap space with several players under contract or agreeing to terms, but maybe not officially signing contracts that are not reflected in the table. But the Toronto Armstead reworked contract is also not available on the table. So I'm sitting here wondering, Ron Armstead was uh, owed a $13.25 million guaranteed salary. Eight and a quarter of that guarantees on March 16th. So in two days, he already had the other 5% guaranteed coming into the season. He's carrying a $20.8 million cap hit, but it's it's been readjusted. What kind of space and savings did they get? And more importantly, how did they get it? What did they do to this contract? Did they move money? Did they change the salary? I have a hard time envisioning Teron Armstead just gave money back. Did they do what they did with Cedric Wilson's contract, which was tear up the last year of the deal, put it on a void year on the back end of it, and that this is it for Teron Armstead and he's out after this year as an expiring player? 
did they finagle knowing nudge, nudge, wink, wink, that this is it for Toronto Armstead. This is the last go round. We're going to retire after this. So we are going to put funny money in here to just redistribute the funds. And if Toronto reaches a certain threshold, he'll get the bonus as a thank you and exit on the way out. They will get added to the 2025 cap. I don't know. And that's the problem. I want to know. Because I'm a total geek for this kind of stuff. As much as I am getting up in the chair, I'm getting getting on top of the microphone here. As much as I joke about not being a math guy, a lot of this is the strategy elements of the offseason that I find the most fascinating because there's interest for the player. There's interest for the team. There's different avenues to take. There's the PR element of it. There's um, the, the politics of it, all of it. And I'm not suggesting that specifically for Toronto Armstead. That's every contract negotiation for every player in the league. And how you balance all of that is one of my favorite elements of this time of year. And we do not have it. I'm waiting for it. <laughs> but we don't have the details. And I, I literally just pulled it up right now. It's 11 o'clock on Thursday. I don't have it there either. Uh, but we did get some other contracts that have come in, including including Jordan Brooks. We got this contract. And here's what I could tell you about Jordan Brooks and his salary cap uh, implications. He signed a deal. The base value of the contract was an average of $8.75 million per season. Three years, $26.25 million. He got a signing bonus of $8 million and change. Uh, and then he got an additional fully guaranteed of nine and a half million dollars. It's about $16 million in guaranteed money on this contract. It is a two year commitment for Jordan Brooks. Uh, his salary cap number for year one is $3.9 million. His salary cap hits for year two and year three. You know, he will collect $7.8 million in base salary in each of those two seasons. Uh, and he will collect uh, a, a he will be on the books for a salary cap hit of eleven point one million dollars against the cap in each of those two seasons. If things go well for Jordan Brooks, you could pretend that's a potential restructure candidate. That's a if things don't go well, that's a potential post June first get out of contract, and you could save money against the cap as early as twenty twenty five. But uh, ideally, all of your contracts work well. We know that's not how it works. But seeing that one and seeing Jordan Brooks and his cap hit on the books for $3.9 million and knowing that Jerome Baker took a dead cap hit for the Dolphins this year of 4.9, you're allocating about the same amount of money towards that linebacker spot that I had in the offseason blueprint. It's just Jordan Brooks. And Jerome Baker dead money versus reworking Jerome Baker's contract in the first place. And then it sounds like Jerome Baker is going to be visiting with the Tennessee Titans today as a potential free agent signing. So that is um, that's something to look forward to it is where Jerome ends up landing. That is going to do it for us here on this episode of Locked on Dolphins. It is your team every day. You can find me on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of the show. Keep it locked in right here on Locked on Dolphins. Make it a great rest of your day. Fins up. I'll be back to talk to you all again soon.